lifeline. It's an hour of connectivity, liberty, love and laughter hosted by the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living right here in Kingston, Jamaica. It's such a joy to be here and to, to share this experience with you. You know, it's, it started about ooh, perhaps about a year ago um, as a response to what was going on, um, what happened with the pandemic, and it was just another way for us to provide spiritual tools and strategies to enable each and every one of us to rise above and consciously during these times. It also um, provided an opportunity to support others in, in shifting from a fear-based thinking to a faith-based thinking. This evening we have a very special guest with us and I'll tell you about him in a little while. Um, our topic this evening is the way to love. And before we go any further, it is my absolute joy to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to open with an affirmative prayer. Thank you, Sandy. And it's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to this evening's Lifeline. Please join me as we begin, as all things begin, with God. Know with me that God is love. And that love is at the center and circumference of our consciousness this evening. As we bless the distance between us and it becomes filled with love, it becomes holy space. So that everyone who is tuned into this moment is part of this unending circle of love, whose center is right here where we are and whose circumference is everywhere. I know for our guest speaker that that love that created all of us out of, it, out of itself awakens within him the divine spark. Shot from central fires of the universal flame, it warms each and every soul who is tuned into this evening's experience. It is truly a love song sung by God and we uncover the way of our heart and the heart of our way as we share in beautiful communion one with another our ideas our beliefs and our conviction that god is all there is this word is released to the law in thanksgiving for its perfect fulfillment and i give thanks i truly give thanks that this is so as together we say and and so. so it joyfully is. Thank you, Reverend John. It's always great to start with prayer. It just sets the tone for what our, mm -hmm. our, our time together is going to be like. Uh, and our time together is going to be very, very exciting this, this evening. We have as our very, very special guest, a transformational speaker, a writer, and a workshop facilitator. He's a recognized leading resource in the field of diversity and inclusion. He's also involved in addressing generations, mindfulness, and leadership. He's also a frequent uh, contributor to the Science of Mind magazine. And I, it's oh, my absolute pleasure. I mean, this is it, the November issue where he wrote um, the daily the daily affirmative prayers this uh, and it's like like a treasure trove i mean there's just so much excitement in, in in his writing and it's just awesome to have him with us he has been named as one of the emerging spiritual leaders in our world by reverend michael bernard beckwith spiritual leader of the agape international spiritual center in los angeles california our guests is committed to shining a light of hope, peace, and power into every environment he enters. And we are feeling that hope, peace, and power right here, you know, transmitting across the, the ocean from, from California where he lives. Friends, it is my absolute joy and deepest pleasure to ask you to help me to welcome our very, very, very special Lifeline guest this evening, Jeff on Seeley. Thank you so much. I can hear the applause. I can hear the, uh, the gratitude, the appreciation all over. And I, I, I'm really, really grateful 
it's uh it's so fascinating you know though we've been in this very unique set of circumstances over the course of the last year for some of us maybe a little bit longer the way in which these doorways of opportunity is allowing us to connect with one another in ways that maybe we weren't fully aware and attentive of uh, maybe even more importantly reminding ourselves of this golden thread that is flowing throughout all things that is bringing us all together providing us with life um, I want to share just a little bit with you um, as it relates to this concept of love, the way to love, what is love, and how we are all empowered and brought to life by what I call the divine love. As Reverend John said, it is forever pouring forth from the infinite flames that is dwelling within all of us. And imagine for a moment that you were able to recognize this source of love that is shining within every cell, every atom, every tissue, every molecule, every fabric of your being and recognizing that this love is not just dwelling in this very moment of now but the love that is connecting all of us is that which has been forever pouring forth from this divine throughout our ancestry throughout this sacred earth that is spinning and orbiting in such a divine and harmonious manner as the sun above is illuminating upon it as we think about the trees that are reaching towards this light as we think about the seeds that are slowly awakening to their own inherent greatness as they are resting in soil that has been accumulating nutrients since the beginning of time. If we really begin to recognize this, we see that every breath that we take is a gift of love. Every word that we speak is an expression of that love that is dwelling within ourselves, even if that word seems to miss the mark and not recognize the nature, the glory, the light of the individual who we have the opportunity to speak these words to. And I know from my, my experience, my perspective in this moment of now, there was nothing greater than pausing, taking a breath and remembering that which I am, which is empowered by the source of life that is. And from every perspective, each moment, it is surrounded or encompassed in this shell, this environment, this atmosphere of love. And I share that with you because when I'm sitting here and I'm saying it, it might be easy to say, all right, well, I mean, we're talking about this on a uh, this evening and, and sure I can understand how how one can say that there is this all-encompassing love but Jafon you know I, I don't know if you've recognized there is a lot of things taking place in this planet right now I don't know if you've realized but there has been ex uh, experiences that maybe I myself or people that are very close to me have experienced where it doesn't seem as if this love is actually there there have been moments in my own life where I've been moving or, or trying to uh, reach some destination in my goals, my dreams, my vision, and things didn't match up. And, and, and I, I hate to break it to you, it doesn't seem as if there was this ever-present love that is everywhere. And I say that with the, the most humility possible because for the longest stretch of my time, I actually believed that that was the truth. And in my experience, I had the opportunity to be born in this place here uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah, here in America. Um, in my unique circumstances that I had the opportunity, I say it was a blessing to be brought into, help me recognize what I'm saying is this ever-present love. My, mo my mother is, is, was adopted from Scotland. She is white. My father is African-American. I grew up with my grandparents in this very affluent white community. My father, I didn't know until I was about 16. My mother struggled with drugs and addiction for, for decades in my life. And uh, all of these circumstances that, that were brought about in my experience caused me to look out into the world. And I remember being a young boy and hearing people saying things to me, trying to place myself, my sisters, who were two of the only uh, kids in that community who had a slight different complexion of skin and people trying to put us in this very small box of limitation. Mm. Ultimately trying to help us see that there was nothing that was really great in store for our lives. And I say this because I remember when these uh, people would say things, whether it was at the church I went to, the school I went to, individuals in our community, I remember going and asking my grandmother um, why people would say these things to us. And she said something that I'll never forget. She said, you know, 
and they, they called me JJ, Jafon Jr. You know, uh, JJ, somebody's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Oh. Mm. And I didn't recognize the power of that when she mentioned that to me. Here, was, here I was a young boy still valuing the voices of the outside world more than I was able to recognize or catch a glimpse of the internal whispers that were forever pouring forth out from within myself. And so I went through middle school, through high school, through college, actually listening more to the outside world, which tends to bring this idea of comparison, which tends to separate us from our own internal nature and allows us to put more focus and attention on what's happening out here instead of recognizing the ever-present light that is in here. And when I was in college in Seattle, um, you know, Reverend John asked if I read all these books behind me. No, but this is one of the books that I did read. Yes. And uh, if you, if you want to, some people say, wow, that's a great uh, uh, paperweight. I mean, this is a, a pretty big book. So, <laughs> but I, will, I never forget one of my father's friends, he would, he would always say these things to me. Um, kind of like I mentioned to you at the beginning, yes. Jafon, there, there's no spot where God is not. Um, maybe you've heard of these. The divine is everywhere present. Um, eternal love is forever pouring forth. And I remember he would say all of these things. And I thought that this guy lost his mind. <laughs> and I told him, how can you say that the divine is everywhere present if there are these situations and circumstances that I'm going through right now, where it seems as if the divine is nowhere to be found. I pointed at my grandmother who raised me, who just passed away. Mm. My grandfather, who was on that verge of making his transition. At that time, pointing towards the experience of my mom who was entering into another rehabilitation center for the third time because she continued to relapse. My little sisters who were still in Utah while I was in college in Seattle and there was nobody around them to uphold them, empower them and help them recognize the light that was shining within themselves. And I thought, how dare this individual try to say that everything is God? Do you not recognize the real circumstances that I am experiencing? Mm -hmm. And that's when he gave me this book. And, you know, there's something that we have to do with books. I don't know if, if you're like me, you might have many books, <laughs> you know, around you that you haven't, haven't yet opened. But there is this very empowering act that if you grab a book and you do this with it, you, you have to open it. I mean, that's a revolutionary act in itself. But when you open it and then start looking at the words, suddenly things begin to come to you. And that's what happened with me. And there was a quote in The Course in Miracles when I read it that opened a doorway within my conscious mind and I began to recognize that maybe despite what I went through, regardless of what I may be going through, regardless of what the future may bring my way, maybe there is this divine ever-present essence that is forever pouring forth into my experience and every opportunity was not a setback but a set up for something greater. Wow. And the quote that I read, says the real cannot be threatened nothing unreal exists herein lies the peace of god Ooh. the real cannot be threatened what is the real the infinite the all-encompassing the one the, the the space in which creation takes place in the creation itself there is nothing other than that one so that cannot be threatened if I can recognize that at a conscious level, then there is nothing that falls outside of that, at the depths of all of our being, at the depths of everything. Herein is where the peace of God or the peace ultimately resides. Ooh. And this was something that really captured my, my mind, my awareness, and I began to move forward with this type of ideation. But it's one thing to recognize a particular insight and another thing to begin to apply it to the way that you are showing up on a daily basis. How many of us have these intellectual bricks of knowledge, these spiritual ideas that have been accumulating in our conscious minds, but yet we haven't figured out a way how to incorporate those into our daily experience so that it is, it is experiential and suddenly our light helps other people recognize what is possible for their lives. Mm -hmm. And when I gave myself permission, 
when I wandered into my first CSL community, which I didn't know there, there even were uh, CSL communities, when I lived in Atlanta, I started recognizing that there was a, a philosophy or at least some ideas that I could begin to embrace internally and then move forward and share the gifts that I felt that I was here to when share. That is the voice that I have the ability to speak to others. And so I share all of that with you because in all of my circumstances, and I'm just sharing from my perspective, I'm sure that we could sit here for, for many days and everybody would have different experiences that have helped remind them of this eternal presence that is always there. But I think most importantly, if we are talking about the way to love, we have to recognize all the ways that we have chose or made a choice to forget that love was everywhere present. Mm -hmm. Because the way to love is a natural, natural way that we ultimately are able to be here. If we think about the elements, if we think about the uh, stars, we think about the air that we are breathing, we think about the cells and atoms that are sparking with this eternal life dwelling within ourselves. I mean, it's an ever-present outpicturing of this love that can be found within all things. And so with that, I, I, I simply take a breath in and I express the love and compassion that I have for all of you and your willingness to allow me to share some of these insights as we go through this conversation here today. And by no means do you have to say, you know, oh, what he said is absolutely true. I have to believe everything that this, this individual said. That, 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 is not, that is not the point. The point is hopefully that you may recognize some of those seeds that have been deposited deep into your soul and you can begin to nurture them in such a way that they unfold and you can start recognizing more of that which you are. And if these words help you to do that, then so be it because this journey that we are on is infinite in nature and what's so beautiful about this love that is ever, ever, ever present is that we are traveling this journey together. And for that, I'm grateful. Wow. Oh. Um, I mean, yes, it's very moving, and I'm sure um, those of us who are listening, uh, res we do resonate with what you're saying. It, it, you know, you spoke very passionately and personally from your heart. You spoke about your life experience. You spoke about the way, the journey, that which brought you to that realization that, you know, in spite of what is happening around in your life or what was happening at the time, there was just something better, something greater, something more um, magnificent that um, had birthed you out of itself and put you on this planet to, to, to be, to, to express that within you. And, and that is the journey. That is the, the path you have taken. That is the way that you have um, discovered and experienced for yourself. Um, it, you know, Reverend John, um, what, 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 crossed your mind as, as Jeffon was speaking? What, what oh, you... oh, oh, oh. A lot of things crossed my mind as Jeffon was speaking. Um, I, I first of all think of Ernest Holmes saying that to know God is to love, for without love there is no knowledge of God. And so I, I just found it fascinating and gripping um, Jeffon's story of, of his journey to that discovery of the infinite invisible within him and 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 his his i'd love to know when it actually happened was it when you walked into um a csl center in in atlanta as you said when when did the dawning of this of this this love that is present it's you know it's it's there already and although as you said you don't see it um in the circumstances and many people don't see it in the circumstances of their lives uh they can't see it to their human eyes it's there uh, when did you awaken to that, Jeffon? When, uh, when did you begin to say, yes, there is more yeah. to life than just the experiences, and I no longer will live under the law of human opinion, because that changes from moment to moment. Right, right. Yeah, you know, um, one thing that I'm very grateful for when I look back at my experience is seeing that even in the apparent uh, absence of this love, love was present. Um, yes. My grandparents... My mother, even in her uh, difficult times, my sisters, we, there was this deep-rooted uh, foundation of compassion and love that we had for each other. Mm -hmm. And that love was something that was able to give us the strength to push through, uh, through some of those difficult and trying times. And as a young boy, even when I was in school, in school or, at, or at the church that I went to at the time, I always knew that there was something different, but I didn't necessarily know exactly what that different was. 
Um, and I felt that I could read between the lines and certain spiritual texts that they would provide. And so it's always been a part of my, my being. It feels as if it's been this eternal quest, at least in this experience of life, to try to find the ways in which I've put up barriers to prevent that love from flowing forth. Ooh, and I just... think, Rev Reverend John, is CSL was just kind of a, a place that was meant for me to be to find at that right time, but there was a lot of pre-work that went in prior to me entering into Absolutely. that space so Absolutely. that I was open and receptive. So all of life was preparing you actually yes. for this. Yes. You know, um, the great 13th century um, Sufi poet, Jalaluddin Rumi said, and I want to quote him, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find the barriers within yourself that you have built against it and so and so it, it sounds to me like you were in a process of removing those walls those barriers so that you could shine and i'm still and i'm still in it right now wonderful it is wonderful. a continuous process Very and nice. you know it's a moment by moment thing i'm seeing a, co a comment from reverend stonia davidson who says to jeff on you are so real beloved Yes. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's not a setback. It's a setup. <laughs> she says. Love that. Love that. And you know, I, I'm going to quote you, Jeff, on because I'm I'm reading from the you no know, the November issue of the Science of Mind magazine. Um, this was Tuesday, November third, and you, the very last sentence that you wrote in that, you said, "For what I'm seeking is the seeker within that empowers me to seek." So that mm -hmm. that thing, there that divine thing, is always finding it's needing to burst forth from us and finding its way. So there's nothing outside to look for. Right. You know, only, only God to know from within. I think Zoe, um, no, oh, let me, let me introduce Zoe. She's one of our absolutely amazing young adults. And she's been with us from, I would say from before birth. And so she, she has a question for you. Go ahead, Zoe. Yes. So, one of the things that um, you primarily spoke about was just the people around you, how they really started to reveal to you just like um, just all of the, the blessings that were in your life. However, I know now that um, in my life, and I'm sure in the lives of a lot of other people, we're experiencing a sense of isolation. And uh, one of the things that comes up a lot, especially on social media, is the idea of self-care and self-love, right? So the question I really have to ask is, how do you go down that path alone? You know, how do you take that journey towards really experiencing that sense of love all around you if you are by yourself? Mm. Mm, good question. Yeah, that's a great question. So, yeah. you know, uh, Zoe, I would say one thing that's most important in my life is to establish this spiritual practice that um, I found the greatest growth actually can come when I'm by myself, whether in meditation or doing yoga or doing my particular things that allow me to cultivate or create this relationship with, with the innermost part of me. Um, and then particularly in this time that we are in where many of us are isolated, you know, since COVID started here in the States, I made a particular goal that I, would, I was going to reach out to one person who I typically don't talk to every day. Now, have I, have I been consistent with that? Um, no, I haven't, you know, reached out to 365 different people, but there are many friends who I've had the opportunity to cross paths with maybe five years ago or 10 years ago, who I haven't necessarily stayed in touch with. And I found that I have the ability to pick up this uh, very unique instrument right here, put in a few numbers or, or send a message out, and suddenly I'm able to connect with somebody in that way. Now, is it the same as face-to-face -face interaction? Uh, not necessarily, but the spirit to spirit interaction is always available and possible. And if mm -hmm. I move with that type of intention, then I recognize, while it may seem as if physically I am isolated, spiritually I'm always connected. And that type of awareness really opens this bridge to a uh, real community that is always there, maybe not in this physical space, but in this eternal ether that we're all a part of. Yes. Yeah. So it's one method, one way to love, one way to ensure that we remain connected 
with, with others, whether they are our, our personal, intimate family members or um, someone else that we would like to connect to. Um, I just Ooh, sorry, to sorry, that. Sandy, you know, Rumi, Rumi mm -hmm. again said that love is the bridge between you and everything. Mm -hmm. so I love that idea, Jeff, on of reaching out and just setting an intention to call four people this month that you haven't talked to for a long time to just say thinking one about you. A week. Even, even one per week. Even one per week. And do you know what's so fascinating is if, oh, let's say that there's somebody who you really love and wish you could communicate who is no longer physically on this earth. I found that there is no barrier to the love and compassion you can send Absolutely. to somebody who has transitioned. And I could close my eyes right now and go into a state where I can connect with my grandmother who is no longer here, my grandfather who is no longer here. So this love knows no bounds. And our connection is truly, if we say in that word, it is truly mm. eternal. Wow. wow. You know, um, the heart knows no boundaries. I am neither of the East nor the West. No boundaries exist within my breast. That's Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Wow. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think I saw a comment in the chat um, coming from, I think it was Steve. He says that your story is very similar to President Obama's. And his question yes. for you. Do you have any political ambitions? Oh, uh, you know, um, maybe some of my ideas might be a little too radical. You know, when I say everybody is deserving of love, they might try to put me in a little bucket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I would like to, when I, my wife and I lived in the Dakotas, which is a smaller area here in the States, and um, I was able to really build this authentic relationship with so many people in the community. And if I was able to be in a space where I could really develop these authentic uh, relationships with others and hopefully pull back this veil where, where we can recognize our interconnectedness, um, that would be something that, that I would lean into. But I think at this time, uh, political affiliations, as maybe you all know down there looking up at us here in America, um, there, there is a lot of turbulent water out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but we don't actually look up, we look over. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't look, you know, I'm looking at the map how they always showed us. You know, yes, sometimes yes, yes. I, should, I should twist you're the north, map this you're way. North or, of us. Yeah, you're yeah. North of us. But we look across the water and embrace you. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, Jeff, That's more accurate. It, it seems easy for perhaps you and I and Reverend John and those of us who are in this community who we speak this language and we do this work and yes we are perhaps at different um, places along the 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 um, on, along the lives or life's path but it's a little e it may seem a little easier for us to connect and and, and so so on at that heart um, space. How do you um, how what can you suggest as ways in which we can maybe bridge the gap, like those of us who are of one generation, like myself with Zoe, for example, we're two different generations. Um, I hear my son who is 42 talking about, he doesn't understand young people today. You know, they're, they're generation, they're <laughs> generation gaps and their um, class gaps and education gaps and all kinds of man, you know, mentally created gaps. How do we, really close and, and just acknowledge and affirm that there really is no gap. What, do you, what can we do practically? There is something that I often share and it's this whole concept of authentic interaction. Um, if we are willing to authentically interact with somebody who may be totally different than us, and Zoe said have a cookout, that might be more accurate. Um, but in COVID times, maybe a cookout isn't, a, a, <laughs> isn't as a as, as easy. But I would say, uh, Sandy, authentic human interaction. The moment that we begin to authentically interact with somebody who may be different than us, whether they're a different uh, age, generation, uh, background, religion, when we begin to authentically interact in the way that we're doing right now, suddenly those barriers that may have been created that aren't based in experiential reality start to dissolve. So I would, I would say the greatest way is for us to begin to authentically interact with those who we have the opportunity to do so. For me, it may be people who are a little bit older than me. It may also be with individuals who are younger than me. 
because these generations are continuously flowing. And while we have millennials, my generation, or the generation below me, Gen Z, there are still even younger kids who are coming up. And so can I continue to authentically engage and interact with my nephew, my nephew's friends, my, my nieces, and people of all different spectrums to continue to create this, uh, to bridge the differences that exist instead of allowing these differences to create barriers that prevent us from moving forward collectively. Um, that, that's awesome. Um, and, you know, Reverend, El, um, Reverend Sonia, oh gosh, Reverend, Reverend Elma, I just spoke her name. Reverend Dr. Elma Lumsden is the founding minister of, of our center. She passed away a few years ago, but she has left us an amazing legacy. And her name just flowed from my lips. So I know she's here, she's with us. Um, but it, it's really Reverend Dr. Sonia Davidson, who is one of our staff ministers. And she says, how does love show up in your nuclear, fam nuclear family? How That's the question for Jeff on? Yes. So um, love is probably, I mean, I think it's the root of, of it all. Um, with my wife and I, it's, I mean, everything that we, our words that we speak to one another, the deeds that we do, the mission of our individual and collective journey is rooted in love. Um, with my mother, my sisters, my father. I mean, I mean, I feel that it's the very fabric of all of, of it all. It's there's no room for grudges. There's no room for guilt. There's no room for pointing fingers. There's no room for lack of forgiveness. Um, it is solely rooted on this unshakable, unbreakable foundation of compassion. And, uh, Are you familiar with the love languages, um, Chapman's love languages? Yes, yes. I am. I don't remember what my love language is off the top of my head. <laughs> it sounds like it's... <laughs> it, might be, it might be words. I think it might be I words. I think it's words of approbation. I think so. So yeah. tell me something. Yeah, yeah. More importantly, what's, more importantly, what's your wife's love language? Uh, being together. So okay. quality yeah. time. Yeah. She likes communion. Quality time. Yeah. 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 Quality time. Well, a question I for you there. A serious question, although I was I was I was teasing you. <laughs> what happens when you need to be alone and your your partner, your significant other, um, your you know, whoever it is, wants your attention? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, fortunately it's it feels as if Reverend John. So we've been together now for five years and um, oh, wow. we have a very great relationship where we know, okay, this is a, a moment where I, I, I need to be. And so we have, I don't know, it's kind of like this unspoken thing. If she has things she wants to get done or just needs to relax, no problem. You can be there. I don't need to be hanging from your shoulder and neither does she, I, when I'm going into a meditative state or, um, and then one of the greatest ways is I've been pick, I've I've really picked up running from uh, during COVID, and so I'll go out on a on a seven mile run, and the only thing I'm with is, is my breath, and uh, hopefully my lungs aren't hurting too bad, and I I can just keep going. But um, we've oh. created a, a space where we have this 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 kind of unspoken uh, reverence mm -hmm. and respect Wonderful. for but, each other. You know, it sounds to me like. Um, in, in that in consciousness of oneness, if we, if we recognize that there's, <clears throat> there's only one of us here, there's not you, there's not me, there's not Reverend John and Zoe and so on. It's just one. And in that space of true connectedness in consciousness, then you know, because it's the I that need, needs space. And in her consciousness, it's the I that gives space. And it's the same I. And so it, there's a, 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 a synergy and a synchronicity. There's not a, a, a tug between yours and mine because we are one. Um, so it, it, it works that way, I believe. As the rest of say, I and I. I and mm -hmm. I, yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a, it's, it's a willingness to say what, what maybe worked in a past relationship or what worked uh, last week every moment is a new opportunity. Can I truly be here in this moment and be aware of the needs or aware of the, the, what, what the energy that is being brought to this particular 
moment right now? And can I respond uh, effectively and compassionately and respectfully? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing because Reverend So just put a note in, the, in uh, uh, saying, no grudges, love is absent-minded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, we, um, at the Temple of Life, we have, we just completed our, um, a, a summit last November, where we, um, it's, a, it's a process that uh, we started for our strategic planning, and out of which we developed our a set of core values. And we have peace, abundance, integrity, love, and service. So we have love at the center right there. And so the, the, the challenge that we have is, you know, so we know we, we created a definition and the, the challenge is to also have behaviors. Because love, they say, love is, a, love is a doing word. You know, you know to be loved, but at the same time we have to do love. And what is it that we need to do to demonstrate love? What is the way to demonstrate this love? And so the love languages, as Reverend John spoke about, there's so many, what, what are some other ways that, you know, you, you can suggest as to how we can do love. Yeah, well, I think to your point, love is defi definitely a verb. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it could be a noun because a person could can or is love. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, when I first started kind of speaking when I was in Seattle, there was a, I did a lot of poetry and I would never forget this idea came to me and love is uh, from my perspective at at that time and still today, it's this concept of living on victorious energy or living on this vibrant energy, which mm -hmm. is L-O-V-E. And um, it's something that is always happening. I mean, even if I'm unaware of it, this whole process of even taking a breath or something as, as simple as a heart that is beating, it is this act of love that is taking place. And it's not just within this physical body temple, the air that I'm breathing is an act of love that is reaching into my lungs. And this air that I'm breathing has been in creation since the beginning of time. The water that I drink is an act of love. And I'm not just for my body temple, but the river or the lake or the raindrops for which the, the water fell that has been in creation since the beginning of time. And then taking it back further, the hydrogen atoms that, or the oxygen atoms that combined it and intertwined to create this piece of, of water or this drop of water. I mean, there is no place where love is not if you really think of it from that, that, that standpoint or that realm of consciousness. Awesome, that is, that is so mm -hmm. powerful. Uh, um, I'd just like to um, bring Zoe in again. Uh, she has a question for you. Yeah, so one of the primary things, right, that comes up a lot as well um, in my life and I guess other people's lives is the idea of being present and being aware. So in order for you to experience those things that you spoke about, things like just the peace of nature and that calmness when you're in that meditative state, it requires a level of presence that, to be honest, in this day and age of divided attention can be really hard to grasp. Yeah. So <laughs> if you have any tips on how to like really become aware, to like tap into that awareness? Zoe, I, I must say, it's like the, the questions you're asking are things I'm like, I, I have to remember to say this. And then you ask such a, a, a great question. It's like, oh, it's right there. Yeah, so that, that is an incredible question because that's something that I think all of us at times uh, can deal with. And yes, there are a few naturally occurring phenomenons that have happened for all of us that can immediately bring us back to the present moment. One of them we're doing right now, and that is the breath we're breathing. Scientific studies have shown that we take 25,000 breaths a day on average. So that means this year, 2021, I think this is day like 55 or something. And I went to school for accounting. So I, here come some numbers, okay? Um, so that means this year in 2021, we've had the opportunity to take so far roughly 1.4 million breaths. Of all those breaths that we've had the opportunity to take, how many have we truly been attentive of and aware of? 
Mm-hmm. Being mindful of that breath can immediately pull us back to the moment because that's when the breath is taking place, not just of the physical body that's breathing, but the internal part of us, the, the essence of us that is breathing. And then the second one is our heart that is beating. And our heart beats on average 100,000 times a day. And that means so, so far we've had over two, 2.5 million heartbeats. And um, most of us go throughout a day, a week, a month, a year, not even aware of one beat of our heart, not even pausing enough to just feel our heart beat within us. And again, if we can slow down and feel not just the physical heart that is beating, but the internal essence that is empowering that heart to beat, that slows us down and brings us into this moment, which that heartbeat is happening or occurring in. So at any given time, we can pause and breathe, something that's always with us, as long as we're upright on this earth, and our heartbeat. And it, those two things can bring us back to this moment to which then we can think more clearly, maybe make more conscious choices and follow them through with committed action. So um, even when you're scrolling on the phone, you know, you can stop for a moment and say, all right, let me, let me breathe. And then I can continue my, my scrolling. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, I have two questions in the chat. One is from um, Reverend Sonia, and she's asking you to speak a little bit about your work with Native people. Um, and as it relates to love. And I think I'm thinking particularly of, um, there could be a lot of resentment coming from native people, especially in the US around their experience, their historical experience. Yeah, yeah. So so my wife is actually half native uh, Lakota from the Dakotas. And then she's half, uh, uh, her father, as I mentioned to to you all, is from the, the West Indies. Um, from St. Saint, Saint Kitts. But um, there was this uh, reverence within the indigenous communities, I would dare to say not just here in the States, but across the world, um, to nature, to the, to the Father Sky, to the sacred Mother Earth, to the children, which are, are the trees, the animals, and ourselves who scurry on top or, or root ourselves into this planet. Um, there is a connection. And with regards to the native communities, particularly many of the elders is some of the greatest wisdom that I've gained. And it wasn't from a very thick book. It was from very uh, simple, but, but fundamentally true from my perspective, philosophies. One of which is this idea that there are, are seven directions that we can all travel. We all know the four, east, west, north, south. There's also above, there's below. And the most important journey is that mm-hmm. within. And if we can begin to recognize, and then on that internal journey, the greatest distance that any human being can travel, and this was from one of my uh, friends who was a Hopi elder in Arizona, mentioned the greatest distance that a human can travel is not from me coming from here to Jamaica or from here to South Africa, but from here, intellectual knowledge, to here, which is experiential wisdom. And that journey from the head to the heart is something that it feels as if the indigenous communities and native communities historically have really fundamentally focused on human beings traveling. But it seems as to Zoe's point, many of the distractions in the external world prevents us from making that uh, eternal journey from here to here. And uh, the, the native and indigenous communities seem to be um, something mm-hmm. that kind of recenters me when I have the privilege to communicate with them and or just simply talk to my wife and learn more about her history and heritage. And we collectively learn together because so much of that knowledge has been suppressed and uh, tragically saying has simply been destroyed by way of destroying human beings. Mm. So in effect then um, on the journey from head to heart, uh, we are living from that space of love and we shift away from living in ego that will hold resentment and um, anger from generations before and so on. And in that space of love, um, well, we say there's nothing to heal, only God to know. Mm-hmm. So in that, we, ex- we fully experience love. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a question from Reverend Michael, who is also one of our staff ministers here at the Temple of Light. And he's asking, do you see any increase of the acceptance of science of mind principles in the USA in recent years? Hmm. In some pockets, uh, Reverend Michael, 
there, there does seem to be a greater uh, conversation. I, it feels as if inwardly, particularly in some of the emerging generations, there is a conversation around spirituality. Um, drilling it down to a particular philosophy um, is kind of happenstance. It's not all in one, one kind of flow, but it does feel as if there are a number of individuals who are choosing to be, be more aware or not choosing to. Um, that, con- that light of consciousness is continuing to shine a little becoming bit brighter. More aware. Yeah, mm. becoming more aware. Um, by way of, from my perspective, it was just a simple doorway in my consciousness that opened to this ever-present essence that was available within. And it happens, as you probably are well aware, Reverend Michael, uh, different for all of us and happens at all different times. And there's no telling when those seeds that have been deposited within our hearts may, or our minds may begin to Where's unfold and, and grow. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Reaching towards the light, metaphorically speaking, of our own being, which so, I think is an incredible yeah. idea. So the goal is sure to be attained by all. And it, Absolutely. It, Absolutely. It doesn't necessarily have to happen through the science of mind, but just that spiritual awakening and walking a spiritual path, it, it will happen for any for, for different people in different ways. Yeah. May I just say, um, Madam Moderator, that it doesn't it doesn't have to have a label called mm-hmm. Santa Man. You can call it what you like. It's it's the awakening of humankind as humankind returns to God kind, and it's mm-hmm. happening. I find I'm finding with the young people, um, Jeff on and and Zoe and people of that. Um, cohort that they are they are less concerned with with labels and more concerned with the cause the Mm. cause of 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 making it a better place for people Mm -hmm. um they're more concerned with expressions of compassion than they are with whether you're a catholic or an adventist or a religious Mm -hmm. scientist or whatever is Mm -hmm. and i think that's so wonderful because it's happening and if we if we're not so concerned about getting the credit for it yes. but rather just spreading the truth because it is science of mind but you can call it what you like um you know it, it's just like god it's called many many other names and worshipped in many different forms but it's still god right i think we have time thanks reverend john i think we have time for perhaps one or two more questions and reverend sonia this is a personal one for you jeff on yeah he's asking how are you and your wife preparing your consciousness and, and, and union to receive children? Ooh. Yeah, first, uh, I really appreciate that in all of, all of your questions and comments um, throughout this time. You know, that perhaps is one of the greatest, will, will be one of the greatest uh, blessings. Um, I have nieces and nephews who I feel are, are, are my, kind of like my children, you know, um, but it feels as if we have been preparing ourselves first and foremost to find each other and create a space, an environment where it feels as if love flows effortlessly to invite those children to come into. Um, secondly is m- ensuring that we have a solid connection with the earth that we are on and doing our part in terms of you know, um, the food that we are choosing to eat, the, the ways in which we choose to spend our leisure time, uh, the ways in which we choose to engage a uh, community and, and provide um, assistance or impact people in various uh, communities so that we can begin to be a, a representation of that which we hopefully are, are allowing to uh, bring those children into the world to display their light in their unique way. But um, honestly, uh, Rev. Sonia, um, that will be such a blessing when that time comes. And until then, I can prepare my mind and my heart to make sure that when that time comes, I am uh, in the best space that I can, I can be consciously and recognizing that there's already this spiritual connection with whoever the children happen to be, whether they come from us or whether it's a, somebody who we bring in or whether it's a ch- child that I happen to meet somewhere down the line. Um, we are all part of this human family, you know? So I, I know many have poured into my life who are not just my parents. And maybe, you know, I can continue to do that while creating this space for Beautiful. our children to come in and shine. Beautiful. Oh.
You know, I can keep talking for a long yeah. time. <laughs> if, you could package, if you could package that um, as one of our um, listeners, um, you know, she says, um, what she says, wow, creating an environment where love flows easily and effortlessly. If we could package and patent that, my gosh, we would be absolutely wealthy because it could, could just spread it all over the world. I mean, we just give it away. That should be awesome. And then we have another person who said, would you say the way to love is steep, level, rocky, or smooth? I think that would be our, la probably our last question. <laughs> would the, the, is the way to love steep, level rocky or smooth i would say uh very simply put is love is mm. period yep. and yep. if you would like love to be steep as you that wish what so you're shall it be <laughs> level okay rocky maybe smooth of course but love is the expression and fabric of who we are so love is a is always there how we choose to sometimes wrapped love in, in our ideation is uh, based upon the consciousness that is choosing to see what they are choosing internally to create. Oh man, you're talking about going all evening. You, you have time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, here in California, it's only, it's not even four o'clock yet. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of time. But, you, know, it's, you know, we say all good things must come to an end and, you know, but, you know, it, God, my heart is, is saying, you know, this a parting is such sweet sorrow. But, um, you know, this has been a really, really awesome um, discussion. But before I end, I want to ask you a question, Jeff. Mm -hmm. What would you like to know about us um, as a people in no. Jamaica? And, and perhaps, um, you know, if I could ask Zoe to answer. What would you like to know about us? Yeah, do you know? Okay, well, it looks like we will be going all evening. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would say, so I think that the, the Rasta culture has been one of the most influential things in terms of how I eat. So only plants, you know, I, I used to eat fish, but no, no fish. Um, the whole concept of I and I, listening to so much of the roots uh, music there, which um, is really like a hymn and psalms and prayers that if you really listen and meditate on it, it truly is connecting with the I and I and honoring the earth and honoring the body and the, the spiritual temple and recognizing the history of the ancient Africans and the um, influence that they've developed the way that they've brought all of this knowledge, whether we're talking about the ancient temples in Ethiopia or the ancient temples in Kenya or all of these things that we don't necessarily hear about in the history books. So I, I guess one question um, is how, how rooted is that type of philosophy on the island in terms of connection with the earth, connection with the food, connection with you know, the I and I? Or is that just a small sect of the population uh, to which embraces that, you know, if that makes sense? Well, first of all, before I eventually defer to Uncle Steve, because I know that he is living that philosophy, even though, of course, he is practicing science of mind. And trust me, the two are intertwined. Absolutely. But I tell you that in, in Jamaica, even though you might be seeing some of our like um, our secular activities going on, like all around us, we that's like the heartbeat of Jamaica, you could say. Ooh, beautiful, Zoe. And just really like taking Jamaica, you will realize it every time. Like they're just the beauty of Jamaica is enough to like stop anyone. That I mean. Yeah, that is the reason why, um, for example, you will always have somewhere in Jamaica, like music playing. Like there's just a vibe here where we just know that like life is good. Life is just, it deserves to be celebrated. And uh, even with like just hearkening back to nature and recognizing that spirit 
that just dwells within all of us, it's always there in the background, no matter where you go, whether it be in corporate settings or out in nature. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and we we hold true to that in virtually everything that we do. I mean, there is nothing more to say than that, honestly. Beautifully put. Um, Steve, uh, one of um, our practitioners, Steve, um, made a comment in the chat that the Hopi um, revere Bob Marley as a prophet. Yeah, so in the Hopi, the Hopi philosophy or yes. prophecy um, talks about a recognition of us coming back to our true, our true nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wonderful. Awesome. So, uh, Oh. So Jamaica simply has to be on your bucket list, Stefan. Yes, Stephane. Stephane. yes. I mean, yes. And, and oh, there are a, a, there's a people may not be um, Rastafarian by by religion, but we have a lot of persons who practice a, a natural lifestyle yeah. around food and just ways of being. Um, so oh man, you'll find some real. <clears throat> I mean, and the the cuisine, the, the, what we call ital, <clears throat> ital yep. cuisine, awesome. So we we'll, we definitely open our arms to to receive you when you, you choose to come and visit. Well, um, friends, it, it it has been an amazing discussion, and Jeffon took us to a place that wow, well, we would like to stay, but then we can always recall that place in our heart at any point at any time, <laughs> and so we are so happy that you were able to join us for our. Uh, our lifeline this evening talking about the way to love and of course you know our 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 work here at the temple of life center for spiritual living um, we truly appreciate the support that you give us as we walk this path and we spread our truth and we, um, we we share the principles of the science of mind through our messages and through activities like like lifeline so if you feel moved to to support our ministry, we invite you to contribute to our, our bank account at the Bank of Nova Scotia, account number 20941. Um, so, you know, it's it's just so, so awesome. And, and so, um, Jeff and I really would like to thank you, but I know Reverend John is going to, um, he is going to, to thank you on behalf of our community. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Reverend John, it's over to you. Oh, let me thank you on behalf of our community. <laughs> yeah, fun. It, it has been been just so wonderful um, to have you with us. And this is just the beginning, I, I, am, I know, of, of a long friendship and association. Um, and that there is that bridge of love from our heart to yours, from our consciousness to yours. And uh, you have certainly lifted us up to a greater vibration of that, that exquisite energy known as universal love. So thank you so much for being with us. And can I ask you to do the closing affirmative prayer for us, to pray yes. us out, as we say. Most definitely. Thank you all so much. So let's uh, just center ourselves however we choose to do that. Eyes can be open, eyes can be closed. And from this space, let us take a deep breath in through our nose and gently releasing it out. Another breath in. And as you send this breath out, know this with me. In the stillness of it all, there is this ever-present essence and energy that is forever pouring forth, not just within ourselves, but throughout this entire universe that we are a part of. It is whole, it is perfect, it is complete, it is filled with this ever-present essence and energy, this light, this power, this presence that we are forever a part of. Recognizing this oneness, this energy, this source, this divine essence and intelligence, may we all recognize that we are one with it. For it is that which enables us to take this breath. It is that which is enabling our heart to beat. It is shining within every cell, every tissue, every fiber, every atom, every molecule of our being, filled with this divine light of perfection, of light, of love. Embracing this unification, may we recognize, or may we realize, excuse me, that we are divinely guided and led to share our light in the unique ways that only we can. Realizing that as we step forward and shine this light in the unique ways that we are here to do, 
that we assist others in recognizing the light that is dwelling within them. So may we still become still. May we recognize this inner tug of our spirit to be led and directed to where we are meant to shine. Aligning with this, may we simply express gratitude, knowing that there are endless blessings, endless things for which we can be grateful for. And a mind that is centered in gratitude, a heart that is rooted in thank thankfulness. There was no space for anything else to begin to enter in. So recognizing this oneness, embracing the oneness that we share with the one, realizing that we are divinely led and guided and rooted in gratitude, may we simply release these words out into the ethers, knowing that we are assisting and co-creating our experience. And as we do, may we just simply be grateful and together say, and so, so it is. It and is. so it is. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stefan. And, and I couldn't end without also thanking um, Zoe for um, Zoe to our Lifeline experience this evening. And thanks to Theo and Steve and Vance for the support that you gave um, for, for tech, just to make this happen through the technology. And thanks to every one of you who tuned in on Facebook Live. For, for this experience. It has been an absolute joy to have brought this um, to you this evening and for the energy and the vibe that has been flowing. Thank you so much. Love and blessings. Namaste. 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 Namaste.